Meow. 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 Hi guys, thank you for joining us on Crafted. And this week we've got Kenny filling in for Rico Stan. Super cool Kenny. And we'll be hanging out with Kenny tomorrow on his stream with the uh Saturday night, no, Friday night lights. Friday night lights. You'd think I would figure out the day since it's on Friday. <laughs> and then right down there, we've got Skipper, my buddy. And, and, oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Skipper. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to do it. Off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Guys, um, thank you all for coming on. I'm sorry uh, that we had uh, bummers in uh, James's stream with getting everything working, like uh, talking right. And I, James, I apologize you know, if it was me that was doing it. You know, not big fault, buddy. Technology, man. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna go to comments. There we go. And uh. I'm going first. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm going to do for tonight, and then James will say hi to everybody while I get it all set up. But I'm going to be setting up a fish trap. I've got not necessarily one of these loaches, but I have a yo yo loach in with my Santa Marie Inlers. And he's ate all the snails, and I think he's eating my fry. And I mean, those are expensive fry to be eaten. So, uh, I, and he, he's on the very top shelf. He's like six foot high and he hides in the back of the tank where I, he's so fast. I can't catch him. I'm on a ladder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a trap tonight. I'm going to show you how I make it. And, uh, we're going to try to catch him tonight also. And I'm going to tell you how I do that. And maybe in the last five minutes of the show, I'll show him to everybody live is the goal. <laughs> James, do you want to say hi? And I'm going to plug in some heat. Absolutely. Let me see if YouTube will let me pop that out because I just tried to pull my chat and it said, oops, something went wrong. Uh oh. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. All right. There's our participants list. Hello and welcome from the participants list. Ben Baxter Big Shrimp and BJ Palmer. Brian, I'm not going to screw your last name up. Bunny Viper Aquatics, Carol Cox, Craig Donner, Dennis Christians, GRB Aquatics, Lady Warshack, Liquid Zoo Only Fins, Master Aquatics, just call him Eduardo for crying out loud. Matt West, Make House 74, Merrick T, Nancy B in Tennessee, Only Oscars, Rat Cross Studio, Sarah J. Sieber, The Savannah Darter, Select Pet Sky Dancer, Snoochie Booch, Tampa Tom Fishing, and all of you all lurking and listening. We appreciate you being here. For the crafted show with Chattanooga Ed. Hey guys, that was awesome. That was amazing. And well, uh, there was something else too. Oh what? You had a two dollar super sticker with the fox cat waving and showing hearts for two dollars from Sarah J. L Sieber, the Savannah Darter. Thank you, Savannah Darter. You're awesome. I really, really appreciate it. It I so well Rat Cross is in the house. I'm, this is going to be a sneak preview of a piece of art I'm doing for him. Or some, I don't know if you call what I do art, but. Okay, that's all you get. Okay, so this is going to be our main part of our trap. I've cleaned it out with hot water. All your pop bottles are, you know, made with pop that people are drinking so you don't really have to soap it up or do anything like that. Just clean it out good. Make sure there's no sugar in it. A pair of scissors. I'm going to use some little wood dowels. And this is a, a trap that I kind of designed myself uh, on accident. And I was trying to make it to make snails last year or catch snails as a snail trap. And I threw it into my molly tank, which I always overfeed way too much because, you know, lots of mollies. It's a 120-gallon molly tank. So I feed it all the time so they don't eat their babies. And I have, like, bajillions of snails. And uh, I made a snail trap, which we're going to make tonight, that I caught about 15 mollies in about five minutes with two green beans. So I'm going to make a loach trap the same way 
I'm pretty sure loaches can smell better with their nose, like smell, sniff better than Molly's. I haven't fed him for three days, so I probably got a lot less fry, even more. But I'm going to put some bloodworms in here and see if we can catch him right away. Because I think I can. Because almost every time I drop some food into that tank, he's the first one up there eating the food also. It's just very unusual for a, a loach to be like that. But he's hard to catch. And what I'm going to do is once I catch him, I didn't even realize I had him in there. I forgot all about it. I'm going to pull him out and I'm going to put him in that molly tank with all those snails. Because I've also... There's not as many snails now because there's already three loaches, so he'll be the fourth coolie loach in, or not? Yeah, coolie loach. Coolie loach? No, yo -yo. not loach. Yo-yo loach. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my little scissors. I got these for forty cents at Menards. I love Menards, hmm. and I'm just going to cut the plastic off because we want to be able to see what's in the the thing. So have you guys ever made any uh, traps? Now, Nico's going to eat this plastic. So I got to mm -hmm. put it somewhere safe. Nico eats any type of hard plastic like that. That's, <laughs> oh, it drives me crazy. Okay, I'm going to take off this thing. And I want to get rid of this little blue ring. Because I don't want the loach to even see that. I've actually oh, made one out of a two-liter bottle once. Who did? I did. Oh, did it work? Yeah, it did. I had to keep it in the crick, crick a little longer. But it worked. Yeah, I, I've not done one of that size, but I have done some one-liters and some water bottles and a bunch of different smaller traps. So what I'm going to do is I just want to cut it. Maybe I should have... I'll leave this on to let the air pressure hold, hold the... Uh, that didn't really help. Unfortunately, my scissors are pretty crappy, guys. Turn this down just a little bit. They're 40 cents. What do you expect? Well, these were from the dollar store, and they're just horrible. But these 40-cent ones don't have a, a sharp point at them on the top. And I'm just cutting this all the way around. Oh, since I see Stephen P. while you're cutting, I want to congratulate him on his 2,000 sub. Yeah, that's he awesome. Did, he did a stream last night. I couldn't make it. I had to get up for work. For sure. Definitely congrats on that. Very cool and well-deserved. I watched it, too. Well, I watched it after the fact. Uh, Wednesday night's family night, so I have to watch all my Wednesday night stuff after the fact normally. So what we're going to do is it's going to go in just like that. I'm going to cut this a little bit less rough because I don't like all the little cruddy stuff. So how big is your yo-yo loach? Because uh, there's no, no mine wouldn't fit through that hole. He's going to be... He's about the width of this hole, or the height. But I'm pretty sure that he'll be able to squeeze down no problem. Because, I mean, they get into all sorts of tight spots. Uh, so, Snoochie Booch uh, was asking, will the bottle label adhesive would be harmful? So, I'm going to preface this with companies could change this at any point in time. They could go to a different adhesive. They could change how they're doing it. But in my experience, I have never had an issue with the adhesives off of bottles and or like the extreme containers that I use. I've never had an issue. Uh, typically, I wash them pretty well. Uh, the bottles, I don't really wash. But like if you're using something that has a lot of adhesive, I'll get it under hot water and I'll use like a pot scrubber on it and give it a good scrub. Uh, but I've not had issues. What about you, Jim? I'm, it's going to be in there for such a short period of time. I'm just not worried about it. There you go. We've always put, you know, in the summer times, we have those tanks in the garage when I'm, I'll, I'll fill like milk jugs and two liter bottles full of water so I can put, you know, make them ice. And I've never had an issue with the adhesive or the label for that matter. So I don't think, I think I'm lazy enough. I haven't even taken the label off. 
right? <laughs> just, just, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know of anyone that's had a problem, but again, just be advised companies can always change what they're doing, and you never know, they could use something that is toxic six months from now because it's cheaper. Oh, we can use this, it wouldn't save a penny per bottle on adhesive, but it's toxic, so. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've taken those little sticks and I've melted holes through the sides. Oh, it just fell through. And this way, I'm going to keep the, the cap on there. But I'm going to take a rubber band and I'm going to band it both sides of this thing like that. Now, last time I did it is I just put the rubber band all the way around like this. But I these rubber bands were kind of old, and I didn't trust them. So I thought it would be better just to do like a little trap door type deal. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stick the blood or some blood worms in the hole down here. I think he's going to swim right into it. And get stuck in there. I hope I don't catch too many endlers. Uh, I would bet if you do that right now, you'll have them caught before the stream's up, Ed. Well, that's my goal. So, guys, I'm going to go throw the thing in there, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys? While he's doing that, we got some member chats. Member for oh, awesome. six months, Carol Cox. Glad to be here. And also we have one more. Where to go? Fantastic Freaks, member for six months. Evening, gentlemen and fish fam. And Sarah JC were chimed in and said, uh, Fisherman Fever Goo Gone is made from citrus oil and it will take adhesive off. You can use it and wash with Dawn and rinse really well if you're worried about the adhesive. Yes, absolutely. I have used Goo Gone uh, in the past for some of that stuff and just given it pretty much the same process you just mentioned. A little, little wash with some Dawn and a good rinsing and good to go. Would rubbing alcohol, would that be bad? I mean, you're still rinsing. No, yeah. no, you could use it. And the other thing is rubbing alcohol evaporates extremely quickly. So that, uh, even typically by the time you go to rinse it, I would say most of that's probably gone. I don't, I haven't looked at the quote unquote molecular structure from a scientific point to see if that rubbing alcohol would leach into the plastic with it being somewhat porous. But I, I don't see that being a problem just from a, a typical user standpoint. Hmm. Delilah Critter says she uses uh, olive oil to get rid of it. There you go. That's a new one for me. I had not tried that one. Master Aquatics just called me Eduardo. Just became a member. Welcome Ooh. to Go Love. Oh, welcome, Eduardo. I guess while, while Ed is awake, uh, I've got to ask for my sake. Was Ed being a little bit laggy on anybody else's screen or was it just for me yeah he was lagging a okay. little bit I, I just wanted to make sure with all the issues that we just had on mine i wanted to find out if it was just on my end or not so that's the only reason I'm, i asked all right now james Good have job. you guys checked into your actual internet provider and have you done like speed tests and stuff on your computers before you start streaming oh yeah and i've done it during streaming um i technically have enough um, upload speed to be able to stream in 4K. I'm not going to do that, but I do technically have above the, the minimum requirements to stream in 4K. So the upload's uh, got to probably be yes. for that, what, about 150 or so? No, not, not even that much. Um, but I, I'm well above. So YouTube's recommended um, is 4,500 kbps. I go higher than that by a little bit um, because I doing 1080p 60 frames per second. I've, I've done 30 FPS and it didn't I think Danny and I on. run about 350 to 400 download and then we run anywhere from 150 to 175 upload. Yeah, dude, you, you could stream in, in 4K 60 FPS all day long with that. But my only fear in doing that, how many of the, the viewers can actually see it like that? Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying that you should stream in 4K. I'm just saying that, that you that meet was the my requirements. Because I have considered it, but I'm, that was my only... No. So I, I, will, I will tell you this. According to YouTube's numbers, the the highest um, used device for consuming content 
is still currently mobile. So cell phones are still the primary place where everyone is watching, but TVs are the fastest growing platform where people are watching. So right now everybody's watching on phones. And that's, yeah, that's where the 4K, 4K? Okay. Yeah. So phones are still the, the most used device. And what are those t- coming in at? I mean, it, it varies because a lot of people will change it up depending upon their data usage. So some people put it on auto where it's coming through at 360p or 420p. Um, I usually have mine set for quality, so I'll watch in, in 1080, um, even though it doesn't really do a whole lot, but, you know, have a, a bigger phone and the data is not an issue. Um, but a lot of people actually will, even if you're streaming in 1080, they won't watch in 1080. They might watch in 720 to save on their data plan. Right. So. Mm. Interesting. But back to fishy stuff now that we have Ed back. Uh, it sank really well. I really like those holes that I popped in it because the wa- the air escaped through the holes. I wish I would have put one or two more in just to make it even quicker. But uh, it seemed to work really well. So I the... The only thing I was worried about was maybe the frozen bloodworms wouldn't fit through the hole. They fit no problem. So now we, and I don't think I caught any inlers when I was filling it even. So that was good. They, uh, they almost got stuck in it, but. Uh, yeah, I love my Santa Marie's. Those are beautiful inlers. Oh, they are. They're super. They beautiful. are. Uh, and I do have to tell you while you were away, Master Aquatics, just call me Eduardo, became a member. Oh, Eduardo. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. He I, says he said he's been a member, but his credit card expired, so he didn't put a new one in. Oh, oh that's yeah, I've, happened to me. Before. Yeah, I've been dealing with that too. Yeah. You know, I I wanted to mention this. This this one is actually Kenny E's, and I need to ship it to him. I've got a oh, before I talk about that, I've got a bunch of fish that I packaged and I was about to get them out. And uh then one person asked if they could get a hat and a shirt so i held it back and i'm just waiting for the size of the shirt and i'd really like to get those out tomorrow and then i'll remember to put this in the mail too kenny something i noticed ed you're shipping with just a priority yes you need to do the uh flat rate priority then you get the flat rate price oh is that cheaper yes is that with a different box or how do I? It, you'll see it. It says flat rate. It says flat rate priority on it. And that, that's what will get you like it'll be 16, 16 something for a medium box. And it'll be 20, somewhere between 20 to $24 for a large box. Okay. It's called flat rate priority. Yeah. And you can actually have cases of those boxes shipped right to your house. So you don't have them up if you're going to doing a lot of shipping. Yeah, I'm looking into a company to have them actually make. I'm tired of cutting the styrofoam myself. I'm going to have somebody make it for me. Nice. Yep. Very cool. Well, these guys are all filled with packing peanuts and things like that because they're just all the. Well, I don't have any. Oh, well, I guess I have one. This isn't anybody's. I just made it. But, uh, you know, so I had to pack them with peanuts and stuff because. They got their, they're on a stick with the little thing and everything. And I hope I ship them all good to everybody. And Danny says she wants to know how much you charge her for one of those ghost shrimps. She thought that ghost shrimp was hilarious. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, I'll try to figure it out for her. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, all I need is that. Oh, and I need one person's address. I, oh, I have the. I meant to bring the shark down. <laughs> the the red tail shark. Uh, Chris, Otto, no, Chris, Chris, aquatic uh, tanks. Oh no, Chris. Talking about. I, I never got his address or a real name. Are you talking about Chris uh, Aquazone? Uh, yes, Chris Aquazone. That's Chris George. We met him at the Triple Crown. Uh, oh, man. That's a bummer. I should have brought it there. Okay. Chris George. And do I have, do you know, is he a Facebook friend of mine? <laughs> I, I probably not. It's probably hard for you to know that. 
Well, I, I will try know. to find Chris George. Uh, Chris, if you're out there uh, and you don't have Facebook, um, I don't know. I'm going to Liquid Zoo, you figure it out for me. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. I'm sorry, uh, Matt. But I just need to figure out how to get his address um, so I can send him his fish. And then, uh, but his fish isn't boxed. Uh, and all the rest of them were boxed and ready to go, except I needed to know the size of that shirt. And then, uh, but I'm going to go to the, the post office no matter what tomorrow. So if if you don't get me the shirt size, don't worry about it. We'll just figure it out. Um, I'm trying to remember who that was. And I want to say they said it too, X. Chris? No, for that shirt. Oh, that was X do. I'll just say it. Oh, Xanadu. Yeah. Yeah, I think he said it was either an X or larger 2X. I do remember that part. Well, okay, we'll figure it out. But now let's go back to this thing. I uh Skipper already has his in his Synodonis tank, and he was mm -hmm. showing footage of it, and they were going through the eyes. Really neat. And it made me think about something, Skip. You might want to put like you know how it's sitting like this. Mm -hmm. Put a couple of marbles in there because th this is actually something that they would breed in and drop eggs. I was thinking that too. And it would be nice to find a container. That yeah, it would. Well, you got those littler, little glass containers you can get. Put the marbles in it. Mm -hmm. it's like almost like an mm -hmm. ashtray. It's a round cylinder, and it's only about that tall. You're going to need something small, but if you put, like, two layers of, uh, or even just one layer of uh, marbles, they might fall down through the marbles. And the whole idea of the marbles is they lay their eggs over rocks, and then the eggs go through the rocks where they can't eat them. You would think they'd lay their eggs on something smooth so they could eat them all. But I guess if they did that in nature nothing would happen or they'd all be extinct so but they so they'll lay their eggs right over the marbles and it'll fall through the marbles and then i just take that marble dish out and put it in a separate tank and let them do their own magic hmm. and then nothing will eat them i bet you you're you've already caught them yeah you might because they'll lay their eggs in the cave on whatever gravel you have in there too and no, I mean, no, I'm talking about your yolk. I bet you the loach is already caught. Oh, <laughs> well, but you can still have Synodonis wild, you know, born. You don't have to even help them. You know, they, they'll they have babies on their own in the your tank. Yeah, I just don't want them to eat them, though. Yeah, but uh, it's pretty cool. They like eating snails. If you've got snails in that tank, they'll eat the snails. There's snails in there, but not a lot. Yeah, and they'll they won't eat the big snails, but they'll eat the little snails. They which, don't like which synodonis do you have? Uh Lucipenis. Okay. So but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you, Skipper, because I saw him going through that cave and then I thought about it afterwards. That thing would be awesome for uh you know catching some fish. Oh they huh. they, or they love it. Or not catching fish, but laying eggs. And I I absolutely fell in love with those fish at, at LRB's house because how they would swim around like sharks on the bottom of the tank and then they go in the caves and come out of the caves just like sharks. It's so cool. And when I saw them coming out of that skull, I'm going to put my skull in there with them. So that'll be pretty cool. I can't wait to do Something that. else I would probably like if you had like a peacock eel or one of those things would probably love that thing, a rope fish. Oh, Yeah. So there was a couple of questions for me. I want to just say, uh, MNC, yes, I plan to do a fish room tour. I'll probably start that sometime this winter. But my next project that I plan to work on is I'm going to do a viewer choice top fish in the Danikin house. I'm going to go through a, all 130 species, put them one on one in each video, and you guys can choose which one moves on in the next chat. That's my next project. And then as far as Kenny from ABC, Yes, I'm loving those. All of them are doing great. I do plan to drop a video on that pond in the next week or so. You know, I don't mean to interrupt, but I just saw Anthony uh, 
Dr. Anthony's leaving. And I wanted to talk to him about asking him if he'd like to come up on one of our shows coming up soon. Because I thought about doing Will It Fish, and we do fish from Peru. And, I mean, you can't have a better expert for the fish, fish versus fish than him. But he's That's probably already gone to bed. So if you see it later, <laughs> Dr. Ant, let me know. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, if you need to get a hold of him, man, I've got his contact info. So awesome. Well, he does too. He got a text message from him. Oh, he did? Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> a while ago. A while well, Ed, then I think you can get a hold of him. <laughs> yeah. I just got to find it. <laughs> Before we get too far away from it, Sarah J. Sieber, the Savannah Darter gifted five Chattanooga Ed memberships a little oh. bit ago. Holy cow. Well, thank you so much. That's really awesome. Wow. Now, you guys, don't feel obligated to take them and then say, oh, I don't want to take them because I'm not going to do anything with it. Or you don't want to do re-up. I think you can just get it for a month and not have to worry about anything. It's not like a magazine right. subscription. Right. It so. don't ask for your payment information. Right? It's just there. Yeah. And... I think I added some new emojis this week. Um, I wanted to add a couple more, and it's really hard to add because they just have to be the right pixels, but I'm pretty sure I was able to add Skipper's face. <laughs> I still, I tried downloading like four different James faces, and I still haven't found a James face that'll pixelate small enough. <laughs> I think it's the beard. Now, speaking of which, James, I know you're the expert at this stuff. Now that I got this S22, I know I can get the right resolution picks needed. What do I have to do to make it so I can make my emojis finally? I just resize the images. So I just go in like Paint 3D and resize to what I need. It depends okay. on exactly what you're wanting to do. Like if you're wanting to pull out a background and just make it um you know the image with no background there's different programs but i mean i just go through and I, I actually will size down the the pictures a lot of times to whatever i need pixel wise um because you can you can kind of cheat it there's a system and feel free to shoot me a text when you're working on it and i'll be happy to, to help you in any way buddy yeah they're gonna um, do that then i've got to figure out a way to play with my logo so i can actually get it back on shirts again yeah so, Oh, yeah. Well, I, uh, how I do it is I make them on my thumbnail maker and I just keep cutting away at the picture until it works. But after a while, there's not enough head in the image. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's where resizing comes into play. Well, Ed, I won't say anything about your thumbnails. I enjoy them immensely. Thank so. you. I I, I, I look I look forward to every Friday night wondering what you're gonna come up with next. <laughs> I <laughs> I got blessed to be able to make another one for somebody else uh his channel and I because I have so much fun doing them. And uh, oh my, my chat finally popped. So let's see. I want to go to the emojis. Oh, I got a new me and I got a half a skipper's head. And half of my head. <laughs> See, guys, what I did was I just chopped his hat off, and it worked. <laughs> and then mine was already a head that I had cut out for uh, fitting in a football helmet without the cage, so that worked. Okay, I'm going to minimize this page so I can go back so I can see us. There we go. Okay, I'm back. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, good, not good morning, America. Uh, good morning, America. If they asked me to make a thumbnail, that'd be really cool. But, yeah. uh, Saturday morning cartoons. That's why I couldn't remember Friday night lights because I've been writing Saturday morning cartoons all day. It's okay. And I don't expect you to remember the name of the, the show you co host on. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm terrible. But, uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to make that for her. So that was really cool. But, yep. Um, 
So what do you got going on, Kenny? Do you have any new fish tanks going on in your room or in your, your house? This week I've been on pack kind of hold. I'm going down to do another swap type event down in Albany, Oregon this weekend. So tomorrow, when I, as soon as we get off our stream, it's pretty much going to be loading up uh, fish and plants and all that, just trying to get everything ready. So Saturday I'm not, not happening to be up at 4 a.m. So... Should be a good time, though. Miss Shanna Banana from 503 Aquatics will be riding down with me, and she's bringing some of her stuff as well. So should be a good time. It's a two-day event. I don't know if I want to stay down there because it's only like an hour and a half from the house. I think I'm just going to come home each night and just go back the next day. Well, we lost James. He's just having technical difficulties tonight. After that, then I... Like I said, I've got a few projects around here I need to get done. I want to I'm having a few of the boys over. We're going to get the stands made for the 125s. Then we start moving the tanks finally, get the 300 stand so it will sit, get the 300 up on it. And then I'm going to most likely put the Brycons in there in the 300. So I was teetering between those or the Frontosa. And I'm still kind of teetering, but... I think those Brycons probably those fish that need, need it most because they're going to get up to 18 inches. And... Well, I've got a question for you. When you go to these events, do you plan on how many fish you can buy or do you just buy them and figure out where you're putting them? We never think about nothing, dude. If I see something that's cool, I grab it, and then when I get home, I figure out where I'm going to put it. See, I try to do two empty tanks if I'm going to an event. And so I know I have like a 20 and a 10 ready. And I never well, get anything. The other thing is, too, we have two quarantine tanks, too, that everything goes in. I have an aggressive fish one and a non-aggressive fish one. So That's cool. Do you ever get two aggressive fish that fight each other? All the time. Oh, man. Do you I'm have waiting for uh, Peplin's Borley eye to grow, and then I'm most likely going to put uh, the star sapphires on the left and the Borley on the right. I'm going to change up the ones behind me again. My wife and I just were happier when it was the Africans because they're just more color and they're more active and they're, they're not quite as... Uh, I, I don't like it when I'm sitting here watching my fish and they're absolutely destroying each other over there in the 135s. And they, they've really been going at it the last few months. So we've got those two VA haws that want to breed now and they just been just absolutely being unmerciful to everything in the tanks and i separated them i put the one in the, the left side and the other in the right side and they're still doing it because they can see each other so they're flaring up trying to make nests in each of their corresponding tanks and just destroying everything in the tank so but i that's my plan by the end of this year maybe early next we'll have all africans in those tanks behind me for my streams again oh we got we got a fish question here uh oh! Dun, 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 dun. What's uh, this? trying to find the original message. Oh, there it is. Like, you know, it's up further. Lauren, yeah, Lauren Ellis said that her Cory Doris had laid eggs. What should she do? Well, from my experience, it depends on if you want to keep to to raise the fry or not. If you want to raise the fry, I do it a, a couple different ways. Uh, I'll get a deli cup, the half pound deli cup. I'll fill it up with the same tank water. I'll take the eggs out of there and I'll put them into that deli cup. And I will put five drops of peroxide in with it so it doesn't fungus them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a five gallon tank that's just set aside for this. That whenever they're getting close to hatch, I'll acclimate acclimate the eggs to the temperature of that tank, and then I'll just dump them in there. Uh, I just did that the other day. I had Barbatus and Trilineotis Cory cats, Cory Doris, in that tank right now, growing up. Wow, that's awesome! What well, so? Do you just leave them in the cup? Do you do, do water changes or anything, or you just leave them in the yeah, cup? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I water change them every day. Now, some if you can start seeing the embryo forming 
after you do the water change, I would dump it in. I would go ahead and put it in that tank because any day they're going to hatch. And you already got a, if it's already a well cycled tank, you got a bunch of food that's already in there for it that you can't see. And then just add fry food to it. It's what I do. Uh, but I mean, there, there's so many different ways it works for everybody, but that's what works for myself. That's awesome. Kenny, do you do anything special when you have corridor eggs? We don't, I don't really uh, even try to hatch them. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. I just let them go in the tank. I've never really concentrated on pulling them and hatching well, them. Well, do you get plenty of babies when you don't? Occasional baby. We don't, I, I know in the tank that most of our quarries are breeding in. There's no way that uh, they're going to survive. There's too many, there's angel fish in there and there's, a, a full-grown uh, killifish in there, golden one or so. Danny, I think, wants the ones behind us, when they start laying eggs, we will pull them. Those are those little uh, paliatas. Is that it? Did I say that right? The Is little the hyphen. One thing? They're yeah, the ones the, that I got from yeah. Roxy and uh, Peplin. It's They're, the long fin paleotis. Yep. Yep, that's it. Well, the, the only, like, operation I was ever involved with and I wasn't involved with it at all because I was like five or six, seven, maybe up to eight, was my dad used to breed them. And he put a lot of energy into getting the fish to lay their eggs. But once he got them to lay their eggs, he just left all the eggs on the tank. And he did all glass bottom tanks, you know, because it, was, it wasn't it was for prettiness. It was for just breeding gold, or uh, gory cats. And he would just have dozens of babies constantly. So he just left them in there, but he only had them and guppies in those tanks. Some sometimes the quarry Doris will eat their own eggs too. Yeah, I've heard that. So maybe it's just that my dad had emeralds and the albino quarries. I mean, there wasn't a lot of fancy things going on back in the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. So he just had kind of the generics. And maybe yeah. the generics are just better at not eating their babies. Michael Kriska just sent you a four ninety nine super chat. It says, "Hi, just wanted to say this ah. live stream is the one I look most forward to each week. I know I'll learn wow. something, and I definitely laugh a few times too. <laughs> Thanks, well, thank you so much. Let's hope we caught ourselves a, a loach here. We've got let's we'll check in what ten or fifteen minutes. Okay, and then three G's asking me." What do I think about cylinder sickets? And with Frentosa, I have some in quarantine to add to Frentosa and Brichardi. Short term, you'll probably be fine 3G, but the thing I would recommend is down the road, you're probably gonna wanna pull the Brichardi and the cylinders out because the Frentosa are the one of the top water predators. They are the predators of Lake Tanganyika and that's what they eat is smaller cichlids. So mm. down the road, if, this, if the Frontosa start getting some size to it, my only fear would be they're going to start looking at those guys as prey. So. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. And then uh, Snoochie commented about the, the hang on the back filter that's right here. Uh, there's a reason for that. I need a bigger tank. <laughs> so, uh, they're, the star sapphires are getting bigger. Uh, I want to get a 75 to put them in. Uh, I actually almost had the opportunity to get some free 75s and 125s, but that fell through. So now I got to save money, and because it they're they're a mess right now, they're messy eaters. I tell you, dude, I'd look on uh, Craigslist or Marketplace and mm -hmm. see if you can find a 125 probably be cheaper than buying a new 75 really yeah i did look that up and uh it was during the, the 50 50 percent off sale it was 124 dollars, and then this, the metal stand was like 300 i'm like man yeah it's got an old dresser laying around <laughs> i never buy stands i uh yeah and i've made a couple videos on how i make stands like um, I made it. Well, I just did a fancy one for my mom in her living room. Uh, she didn't like, she wanted a little mini dresser, but she wanted an antique one, but she wanted it new. So we went to Hobby Lobby, found one that was 50% off and I painted it up and I secured it to the wall because that's one of the tricks is you, a lot of furniture. You don't want to make sure it doesn't ever tip over and that 
lightweight stuff is lightweight. So I, I have secured it to the wall so it won't be able to tip. But I made a video on it and I just never edited the thing and put it together and put it out. Terrible. I make so many videos that I never put out. My my issue is with here in the basement, depending upon like if I get it, if we get like rain for days, I do get a little bit of water. So I need some sort of metal stand for it instead of a wooden one. I mean, I could get I could make a wooden one. I just got to paint it, uh, you know, but that would be it. You could put the wood on top of concrete blocks. Just throwing that out. I could do that. You know, I want to say something. Eric Wyrock is here, and he is, or I think he was here, wasn't he? Well, I just discovered that Eric has his own channel and streams on Tuesday nights. He's, have you watched one of his streams yet? No. and I He is to. hilarious. Well, I've met him, and he's awesome, and I've seen him, like, on other things. I the only, the only thing I can say about Eric, he needs to learn how to dance. Other than that, he's a pretty good guy. Well, I, <laughs> I apologize, Eric, and uh, I'm going to be checking that out for sure. Paul Sotero, I personally don't think I'd put Congo Tetris in with discus. No, sir. They don't like that real hot temperatures. Yeah. It's not to say it can't be done. I just don't think you're going to get long. They'll live for a while, but you're going to shorten their lifespan if you put them in there. Yeah, maybe uh, some uh, rams would be pretty. Rams? I've got electric blues in with mine. They love the higher temps. Um, Cardinal Tetras are kind of an old one that used to always see by with them, RCM. Uh, well, they're still, a, I mean, they're, everybody says the old car. They're still a beautiful fish, and they give you a lot oh, yeah. of color. Uh, rummy nose seem to be okay with them too. I've seen a lot of people do rummy nose catchers with them. And stirbys, stirbys love that water. Yep. Yep. Some of these fancier plecos you see coming out, the L two thirty six love that hotter water. Oh, L one seventy threes love the hotter water. See, I don't know much about the plecos, so there's a lot of choices there. Yeah. Now, I will if you want a big dither fish. I ha I know it's not perfect for them, but I do have my Denison barbs in with mine now, and they seem to be doing great. So, well, and I honestly don't know what a spotted Raphael likes, but I used to keep spotted Raphaels with my discus. Really? Yeah, and they had no problems. They just got fat because they ate so much beef heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bet they did. I needed a, a catfish that would handle the heat and keep the place clean you know because i made my own beef heart so it was a little more messy than average but uh yeah they did real well with the the discus for years so yeah i've been my discus man i, I had i contracted that uh paper head and I've, I've been fighting it for oh. over a year i mean i'm up to i think 11 or 12 of my beautiful discus gone and I, i'm down to about four right now and i'm not getting any more till i know i've got this eradicated so, so is that like a parasite in their head or it, it's very similar it's it's basically the parasite gets inside their brain and eats its way out so it slowly but surely caves in their skull and then they die i mean it's it's mm -hmm. a miserable disease and when you've got full size discus that you've it takes a long time to get a discus to size so it's pretty heart-wrenching but i do plan to have my discus back at one point but i i'm not doing anything until i know this is out of there every time i think it's gone another one starts showing signs and i'm like and i i'm done using any kind of meds i've used everything there is to try to eradicate it and nothing has worked so i'm just gonna do the good old what we've been doing is water changes twice a week now, just trying to see if we can just flush whatever it is out. And if that doesn't work, then I'm just going to let nature take its course, give it a six months to a year with just whatever fish are left in there. And then, because it doesn't affect the rams, it doesn't affect all the other species in the tanks, just a discus is what it seems to attack. So I don't know 
what it is, but it's a gnarly one. So in, in close, I don't care how well you know the person you are getting fish from. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. I got cocky, thought I knew this person, and their fish brought in that that parasite. So, yeah. Well, that stinks. And, you know, every time I get a fish disease, I think, how do these fish diseases not just die off? Because, you know, they're in insulated tanks. You know, it's just so bizarre to me how a disease can linger forever. And it's not like us that are walking to the mall or the, the, the amusement park and coughing all over ourselves and eating well, each other's food. In fish tanks, that's what makes it worse. When you do get a, a they are in a confined area. And that when you have the parasite or, or disease or virus or fungus or whatever takes hold in there, you got to remember you're like in that case, it's a 240. So I have a little more about water volume, but not much it, really and of course yeah, i mean it, it has a, a better chance to really take hold because there's not as much water volume as like a lake right so it's but what's bizarre to me is that the strains survive but i i wonder if it's kind of like ick and like every fish is like some ick kind of on them at all times you know it's ick is something we just really can't annihilate as long as we keep our fish healthy they don't get ick you know but like the, the stupid uh, brain disease, maybe all discus like carry a little bit of it, and sometimes it just goes and goes crazy. That's I don't know. true, too, Delia. Delia says, it's not always about trusting the person. It's also about taking the stress-induced diseases into consideration. Yes, absolutely, Delia. Absolutely correct. And that's that's it right there because they a lot of people have done tests on, on tank waters and they have found that it's always there. And then if it, there's a big stressor, they start getting it. You know, is there a better name for a disease than ick? <laughs> I mean, what came first? The word ick or ick, the disease. And if it, the ick, the disease came first, that's pretty impressive. That somebody like my mom, you know, will see a moldy apple and go, ick you know gross <laughs> and it's actually derived from a uh a fish word yeah. I've, I've thought about that many times i probably shouldn't think about things so hard <laughs> it, it happens quite a bit with ick but, oh well what you gonna do yes yeah, yeah. like what snoochie says it's like acne <laughs> Yeah, it's terrible. It's acne, though, that's contagious, which is even worse. You know, it wouldn't be gross if you, when, like in high schools, if one kid popped a zit and the pus just floated around in the air and then got stuck on people. I think that'd that, be gross. that would suck. Yes. Ugh, man. Then you could definitely call that human ick then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, I wonder what happened to James. I wonder if he lost power or something. I think it was his computer. Doggone. Or his system that he's trying to fix it. Yep. Well, let's see. What time is it? Okay, we got 12 minutes. Should I go and check to see if I caught a fish? I would. Okay, guys. I'll be right back. Sorry I'm leaving you. <laughs> it's funny, man. Yeah, he is. Oh, Shanna shows up finally. Matt at Liquid Zoo, I thought I did respond to that. I told you just donate it to your cause, the picture. So the next time you're doing a giveaway or something, give away whatever you were sending my way to, to your giveaway. Uh oh. I, I know what it was. Yep. We got Mark Sterilson from across the pond. Shanna finally showed up. She must have been done taking a nap. 
She needs her. She needs her sleep. She's going to need a lot of energy this weekend, man. She does. And no, Paul, I am not saying that because it'll just be blah 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 blah. No, I'm not doing. I can't say that type of stuff. Miss Shelby's here. Mr. Grant's here. Hmm. So you got that coming up Saturday, and he says two days. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be down there. I might even have to. It might be me streaming from my car on Saturday. I'm probably going to set it up and have Danny start the stream, and I'll just move in from the the car. Well, guys, I have bad and badder news. It caught nothing but endlers. Nope, it, no endlers. Uh, it's still in there. It says all the bloodworms in it, but the loach is hiding behind the fish filter still because he was like terrified and he hid behind the fish filter when I put the thing in there. <laughs> so, and I discovered I've got two coolie loaches or yo yo loaches in there. <laughs> and I see two lo yo yo loach tails in that filter. Oh man. So we'll just leave them in there. And uh, I got a feeling when you turn the light off tonight. Oh, I bet you that's when they'll go in there. Yeah, yeah I, they're terrible. Well, you see, I've tried catching, I guess, both of them uh, rotating, catching these two suckers for like a month now with my net. And I just can't do it because it's like, you know, I'm. What is it? I'm under the head. What, it's on the, one of the top tanks? Yeah, it's a top and it's a 10 long, or it's a 10, so it's long ways instead of wide. All my tanks oh. in my fish room are nice and are the long ways, except for a couple of 10s that are long. And of course, it's that one or one of those. So, do you have like a stool you can stand on or something that way you get a more height to you? I'm standing on a, a one of those little step ladder things, wow. you know, it's like a little three step thing. What I've always done with my any loach because they are tricky little suckers is I'll when I feed at night, when they go up to feed, I'll hurry be sitting there waiting with the net and then try to just snatch them when they're going for the food. But I've tried that, but the stupid endlers are all over the place. Well, I get it. What you do is, is you catch them with the net, right? And then take your hand yeah. and put them in the tank. That's all. And yeah. throw your endlers back in. You're right. That's what I need to do. Or I was going to say the hard way would be to take every ounce of everything out of there which I think you said it's a heavily planted, didn't you? Well, it's actually not too bad. It's duckweed. Or not oh. duckweed. Not. Du I'd be happy if it was duckweed. Uh, it's just guppy grass. Oh, then it, guppy I, grass. that's what I would do. I would just take all the grass out, take the filters out, catch them both out of there, be done with it, move on to your next project. Yeah, I'll bring down like a five-foot ladder maybe so I can get in there so I'm not just raised my arm over it. But... But let's just see if I can still catch them tonight. And what I'll do is I'll take a photo of them in the trap and put it on my Instagram tomorrow if I do. Nice. Or do so, a short. Yeah, we'll do a short too. That'd be fun. Speaking of which, I see your shorts must be working, buddy. I see you uh, are 90 away from hitting that 3K yourself now. Oh, wow. I didn't even check today's. Yes, sir. You're like, I think I read, I think it was 90. You're 90 away from 3K. Wow, I get about ten subs a day from those things, so pretty good deal going on with those things. And they're fun. I I really love doing those. I love doing the shorts, and except right now, baby cat keeps getting in fights with Nico, and he's she's messing <laughs> up my money maker. He <laughs> has a scratch this way across his face, and it's like, dude, why they've been fighting so much lately? Nico loves to wrestle. Oh, so Nico's asking for it. Yeah, like he'll, he hides behind the, the couch, and when she walks by, he'll, like, grab her and tackle her. And then she whacks him, and he screams and runs away. Well, I mean, he's asking for it. He's... It's nonstop. I mean, most human ladies, you go up and grab them and wrestle them to the ground, they're probably going to do some scratching and kicking at you, too. I'll just take your word for it. I don't think I'm going to do it. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> never mind. I can go too many ways with this. <laughs> oh, my God. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But, well, thank you guys so much. I thought uh, we were going to have a special guest come up. Oh, that special guest did show up, but that special guest ain't coming up yet. Oh. Well, okay, you know what? We're going to bring up the special guest problem anyway. We have Shanna503 has problems with some of her guppies, and she needs to catch them. Now, when I made my trap, I caught the first trap. I caught a ton of molly super fast with green beans. Now, guppies, I don't think guppies are, are as smart as mollies. So it's like if you put food at the end of a maze, I think guppies will probably be the last ones to get through the maze to get the food. They'll probably still be at the, the front all like begging and dancing together. You know? So um, my friend Sean Peck, he had... One female guppy he could not catch. He caught all of his other guppies out of his tank, but this one girl was super fast. And like one day I was over there playing games and I said, boy, that's weird to see one of your shrimp swimming around in circles like that. And it turned out there was a whole, the shrimp's head was stuck in the girl's mouth. The girl Molly's mouth. Oh, here she is right here. Ah, uh, bam. Shanna. Hey, hey! Well, dis disregard my uh, text then, Shanna. You well, got it. She is having a problem, though, and we need to help her catch these guppies. I was going to say, we can't solve all Shanna's problems. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why you got to do me like that, Ken? We're only talking about her fish problem. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. We discussed that before the show. You didn't read the notes, dude. Which guppies are you trying to catch? Well, I accidentally thought it might be a good idea to put them in a killifish tank. There and then me. I realized it was a terrible idea. <laughs> and I regret my decision and my actions. But I unfortunately don't have one of those way back machines that I can just hop into and not do that. I've, I've got a question. Why is everybody having problems with catching fish with nets? Because you're some sort of savant. Congratulations. <laughs> the rest of us are mere mortals. Do I need to come Kenny over? doesn't even use a net. He just goes in there like a ninja and grabs it with his hand. And by grabs it, I mean they attack him. He just yanks his hand back out. And they're just stuck to his fingers? Yep. <laughs> Most of my guppies. And then he probably pulls them off and spits them in the bag. When I'm, yeah. when I'm getting ready to ship, a lot of times I don't even have to use it at because I just fill up a container and more than 70% mm -hmm. jump in the container on their own. And then I dump them in and figure out which ones I want to ship. And mm -hmm. pretty easy. I, I don't know how Shelby and Grant do it. I mean, they're catching little bitty shrimps that are super fast. I feel like I'd smush them. He had one of them or she, I don't know which one because it was just a finger. I don't, I can't tell boy fingers from very good from girl fingers. It wasn't Harry, but he had his finger like this, and he had one of his shrimp crawling around on his finger yesterday. Or her. There. That's and out of the tank. I don't think, if it was in the tank, then I'm not impressed. And Grant says you just gave him a new method for c catching a shrimp. So he's probably going to try your old trap. Uh-oh, oh. where'd Shanna go? She's switching her camera around, I think. I got to drop back off, you guys. I'm sorry. Oh, she got a phone call. Well, that's all right. We're still discussing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I love that girl. <laughs> she makes me laugh so much, man. She like, does. that's the big problem Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to come back. And, I mean, I am going to be just hurting. Maybe you can go over to her house when you go to pick her up and catch her fish for her. Yeah, maybe. But she'll meet me here most likely. Oh, dang it. Because I'm going to use every minute up till the minute we leave, probably packing and catching and making sure I don't forget. Because Danny will be gone. She's going up north to see my daughter. So I've got to make sure I grab everything. 
I'm probably going to start making a list tonight just so I don't forget because I'm going to be pretty tired tomorrow. When I was at the Triple Crown, I had had to I had to catch all the fish out of my little show tanks and out of my like uh, skate tank, and maybe I helped also with carries. I don't remember, but my back was really killing me, <laughs> and I was trying to put them in the bag with the my net net. And Grant like saw me and said, "Hey, let me help you out." And I was thinking, "Man, he must really think." <laughs> but I was more than happy to let him take it because my back was sore. <laughs> maybe, maybe I had a face like this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what I looked like, but uh, he was awesome. How he was willing to just take it over and bag those fish. Why we always yell and says she has a clip of Kenny and Danny dance or Kenny and Shanna dancing outside. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, we've been on for an hour. Um, maybe we can try to address her uh, problem tomorrow too on the show because the three of us will be on the Friday Night Lights tomorrow night at ten thirty Eastern and. 7.30 Pacific. 7.30 Pacific. So if you're somewhere in between, you know, just guess. I guess. Or be a subscriber of Panic and Aquatics and hit that bell. For sure. That'd be awesome. Well, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, James, if you're re-watching this, thank you for being here. Sorry that you got bumped or something. And thank you guys for the super chats. Thank you for joining up on the memberships, folks. I really appreciate it a lot. I really do. And I wish I knew like a good way to repay y'all. And I don't know how I really can, which is crappy. And uh, thank you mods for being so awesome also and watching. And next week, hopefully this time, we'll have uh, KG Tropic. So everybody will be more happy because they're awesome and wonderful but i'll be back at 10 30 at my normal time probably next week unless kg doesn't get their internet work working and then it'll be i guess nine, eight, nine o'clock again so we'll catch y'all later guys oh did you guys want to say anything as always love your fish awesome. see you click <laughs>